Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage John Clay, sports columnist for the Lexington Herald Leader, and University of Kentucky football coach Mark Stoops. You're over there. You're over there. Mark? First of all, before we get started, I, as said, I'm John Clay, sports college there, a leader, Mark Stoops, football coach at Kentucky. Uh, before we get started, Mark, a friend of mine who's a longtime Kentucky football fan said that you really have to be a longtime Kentucky football fan to appreciate the job that you've done at Kentucky. Just to kind of go over a few of the things here, you're entering your 10th year, which is a record for Kentucky football coaches. You need one more win to tie Bear Bryant for most wins at Kentucky, six straight bowl games, including four straight bowl victories, two of those Citrus Bowl victories, uh, two a 10 win season in 2018 and a 10 win season in 2021. So hopefully I pumped you up enough before we get this, before we <laughs> well, get started here. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, obviously, Mark, uh, name, image, and likeness is a major issue in college athletics right now. Governor Andy Bashir signed by executive order last year allowing uh, athletes to earn money for promoting products and services. Uh, and then this year, the Kentucky legislature passed its own law, NIL law to, it, just was wondering, what do you think about NIL overall? And specifically, yeah. what do you think about the Kentucky law? Yeah, well, I really appreciate the work, first of all, of the governor and our legislators and, uh, you know, really expediating that process and moving it along as fast as they could and, and the hard work that they did on it. It's extremely important. It's important for our young people uh, they deserve uh, the opportunity to, to monetize them, themselves and make money uh, with their name, image, and likeness. And I really like the bill. I think there's uh, specific pieces of the bill uh, that were very helpful. The first thing is, is the opportunity to make money and, and continue to stay eligible. Uh, that was uh, something that we've debated in college sports for, for so long. And again, I believe these players have that ability to do that and continue to stay eligible and participate in college athletics. I think it's very important they gave the flexibility for the universities to get involved, um, you know, to give some guidance. It's, it's very important. Um, there, there's so many opportunities for these guys. We have so many student athletes and the university to give some guidance to protect our young people, their name, image, and likeness and their brand along with protecting the university's brand and what we represent and what we want to look like going forward. Um, I also think it, it was really important uh, uh, for us to give some liability protection. Uh, the relationship with uh, players and coaches and administrators is extremely important. Um, and to give some protection, again, there's so many things. This is a new space. There's so much going on. Uh, that uh, it was important for us to keep that relationship with our players, try to advise them and help them as much as we can, and also give us some protection long term. Um, and then lastly, I think what's most important is there's flexibility in this law. Um, this is an evolving space in college football, in, in college sports, and uh, it, it's, there's a lot of moving pieces. And I really like the flexibility in this law to be able to grow with it and change it and constantly look at it because uh, this is new and uh, the, there's a lot of unintended co consequences that are going to happen and we have to learn through this and have the ability to adjust and to grow. So I really love uh, what they've done with this law. I really like, uh, you know, I think federally, if you look at that, if, if you look at our state law, I think our people really did a great job and I appreciate that. I know the NCAA has lobbied Congress to have a federal NIL law. Would you be in favor of that? And if so, why? Uh, I would be in favor of that. I think consistency is what we're looking for. Um, you know, we did what we had to do to protect ourselves within this state. And, um, but I think, you know, the, a level playing field across uh, the country is important. Um, we ask for federal legislation. Uh, once again, I think for consistency and, uh, and you know, the, there's, um, you know, too much flexibility within the states. And, um, you know, I think we all are in favor of this for the right reasons. I think we have to protect ourselves for the things that are getting out there with the recruiting and the pay for play and the things that are going on. 
um, you know, that could get out of control. Well, one of the things you mentioned about unintended consequences, uh, for example, your quarterback, Will Levis, was announced this week and signed an NIL, NIL deal to, uh, with Claiborne Farm in nearby Paris, uh, pretty close to where I grew up, to help yeah. promote his stallion there. Obviously, some players are going to get NIL money where maybe other players are not going to get money. How do you manage that? How do you keep the locker room Hap, well, ha yeah. I don't know if happy is the word, but how do you manage the locker room when, when that's a dynamic? Yeah, that, that's, that's a, a great question. I think um, we've been very fortunate to this point. Uh, as you know, I've been here nine years and worked extremely hard at, at building culture, building a winning culture. And I know that, that word gets thrown around a lot, um, but I think it's paying dividends right now. Um, you know, our team is completely focused on getting better. I think our players understand uh, maybe a bit more of a professional aspect in that regard as far as taking care of their business, doing the very best they can as they continue to perform, as they continue to improve, more opportunities will come their way. Uh, but I think, you know, culture within your locker room and your organization is still extremely important and we've been blessed in that area. Well, speaking of culture, when you arrived in 2013, the program, it had some success under Rich Brooks. It had dipped some after that. Obviously, you've talked about since day one about establishing a culture. What did you mean by that? And, and what were the steps that you wanted to take to establish that culture? Well, I, I think it's very uh, important. Nine years ago was very different than it is right now. I think in any business, any organization, any, any athletic team, um, you know, you go in as a leader, I think the first thing was, you know, define, you know, define exactly what I wanted our organization to look like, we'll define exactly what, I, what the employees, what I wanted them to look like, our coaches, and define an ideal athlete. And, uh, you know, be, be, be very clear in our vision on that. I think the, the second thing after you are very clear and define that, and again, I think it, it correlates to many different businesses. And, Believe me, I know there's a lot more intelligent people in here than, than, than I've been around. But uh, then the second piece of that would be discovery. W w okay, we want it to look like this. Where are we? You know, and how do you do that? You build relationships, talk to people, dive into assessments and, and, and uh, you know, spending time with the people that are there and discover exactly where you're at. And then the third piece would be how do you close the gap? How, how do you work on those blind spots that people have, that people have uh, you know, within themselves, within the organization, and uh, work extremely hard to, to develop uh, you know, things that can close the gap between the ideal and between reality. And uh, you know, those are things that we constantly talk about. You know, the other things are you know, with building a winning culture is, is selecting and you know, making sure you have the right people. I think we all can relate to that uh, in this room and across any organization that uh, you're only as good as the people around you, whether it's selection of uh, the players on our team, um, uh, selection of the right coaches, and everybody that affects these young people, um, you know, is certainly extremely important. You know, and uh, I had an opportunity in, in a discussion re recently uh, with Nate Morse, the, the CEO of, of, of Rubicon, and you know he was telling talking to me about all the all the employees within his organization and how he's involved with every one of them, and that's the selection that we're talking about. That's what we want in any organization, and that takes time. Uh, it takes a great deal of time to build those uh, relationships. I, I think it takes a great deal of time to sp spend time assessing, you know, evaluating, and giving feedback and being very clear on that. And uh, that's something that uh, I think is invaluable to us, you know, whether it's an assistant coach or whether it's a player, of uh, being very specific about areas where they may be falling short. And then we bor borrow things from the military and do IDPs and, you know, that's an individual development plan and be very specific on areas to close the gap, areas to improve exactly how we want them to improve and, and why. I think uh, you know those are things that can relate to any business, any you know any team, um, and uh, we try to be very specific, very clear uh, with what we're doing. 
You've come from a situation where you got here in 2013 where you may have had to kind of talk people into coming to Kentucky to join you. With your success, I'm guessing you have more people who are interested in joining you. Uh, and obviously staffing has, uh, the number of staff members has, has increased over the years. What, what do you look for in an employee now? Yeah, I think that's it's a great point. I think, you know, uh, you know, the baseline, I mean, the talent has to be there. You know, that, that's a given, whether it's a player or an employee. You know, you have to be talented. Uh, you know, we're in a very competitive space, and we have to have the very best people. But I think the intangibles is what you're looking for. I, th I believe very, very strongly in relationships and spending time. Uh, there's, there's nothing more important than investing yourself in them. That gets hard. We all have families. We have things, you know, outside of our, our profession. But these players need that. They, they need uh, you investing in them, no different than employees in your organization, spending time uh, and being with them. But you got to have great people, and I've been very blessed. I've been very, uh, been, been supported extremely well. Dr. Capilouto just spoke here not long ago. He's been great leadership for me. Uh, it's very nice to have the leadership for nine years. Dr. Capilouto, Mitch Barnhart, our athletic director, and myself have been together for nine years. Uh, there, there's an element of trust there uh, that helps us in a lot of areas, and they give me the resources to hire the very best people. Um, you know, but with recruiting, you know, that's constantly evolving as well. You know, as we get better, as we improve, uh, certainly uh, that level wants to go up. Again, I think the talent threshold is always a baseline and then you're looking for intangibles and things that can help take you to a championship level and that's what we're looking for i think in the space of name image and likeness i think that is an area of concern you know that that those are some of the things that we do have to look at because you want to reward these players for the for the work that they've done their entire life some of these people are fantastic at what they do. Maybe no different than a programmer who's in college right now and some of these businesses want to hire them up because they're talented and they could get paid. They should get paid. And our athletes are the same way. I think a concern is the pay for play of recruiting you know, student athletes and paying them coming out of college. And the guidance, I'd like some guidance in that area. That's an area of concern. You know, is that something the NC, the N, if the, there was a federal NIL legislation could help with that? I, I absolutely think it can help. I, I think it's complex. I think it's, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm not saying I have all the answers to that, but it's something I think that we all have to dive into and, uh, and, and get our arms around that. But one last thing before we wrap up here. I know you have been very intentional about promoting and developing leadership in your program, especially within the players. Can you just talk a little bit about that and how important that is and how much, how much uh, progress you feel like you've made in that area? Yeah, I think you know, some of those specific areas that I talked about earlier are some of the things that we do. You know, anytime any player comes into our organization, I think you know, the first thing we're looking for is for them to lead themselves you know, and do things right. You know, it's, it's um, you know, we were talking outside and talking with Dr. Capilouto and some, and, and Nate and some different people. And, uh, you know, these players are under extreme pressure. They have a lot going on. Uh, they're they uh, very busy from morning to night. They're disciplined in what they do. Um, and they have to be able to handle themselves and, and lead themselves first. And then we help them and give them areas to improve and lead others, maybe lead guys in their position room, uh, you know, affect others in a positive way, and then ultimately get into a leadership position where they can affect the team uh, and they can affect the community. We've been blessed with some outstanding young men uh, that have been impactful in our program, but impactful in this community within the state and within the country. We've been blessed with a lot of award winners and people that have done some amazing things away from the football field. Those are some things we're extremely proud of and uh, want to continue to promote. Uh, before we leave here, I, I have to ask you, though, going into your 10th year, how do you feel about this team going into yeah, the, I, the season? Thank you. I feel very good. I feel very good. I feel like we have very strong leadership, first and foremost. I feel like the guys are, are very focused, uh, very disciplined. Uh, they've worked really hard. Um, you know, we have a quarterback returning that uh, is an impact player. Uh, that, that's a dynamic leader and a great player and, and uh, a lot of good pieces around him. So we're excited about the season. 
Yeah, he, he really has taken to that leadership piece, hasn't he? No, without a doubt. Yeah, he's a natural born leader and he works at it as well. Um, he's a guy that come in, in, in last summer and he made an impact with, with players uh, very quickly. Uh, it's very rare that you see a player uh, enter your program in June and uh, voted a captain at the end of August, beginning of September. So I think uh, it didn't take long for people to spend time around Will and see that he was the type of leader that you're looking for. And, um, you know, so that, that's a great piece to build around. Well, Mark, thank you very much for being here. I want to thank Concordia for having both of us, and we yeah. really appreciate it. Yep, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Yep. Thank you.